I did a whole lot of moving and then <laughs> I hit record then started moving. <laughs> I could have just moved and then hit record. Welcome to the podcast. I am here with Mr. Trevor and I didn't say the name of it either. We are starting off great. What happened to the, oh, I have a new intro planned out for the next season of Midnight Ramblings. Yeah, I thought about it and then I messed it up. So here we go. I'm going to leave all that in. Yeah, I mean, we've said our names, we've said what this is, what we're doing. It's I mean, I could cut it and start over. Uh, no, because I want to continue this conversation we were just having about... Go ahead and keep going about them candles. It's the only... Welcome to the podcast, Midnight Rambling Podcast. We're going to be doing things a little bit differently this season, this go-around. I'm Douglas, I'll be your host, and I will have the other guys with me every so often. We're going to make these shorter and more... Um, no, that's not the word. Uh, more intimate. There you go. I don't like that word either. More in- intimate. We're gonna hug in the middle of the podcast. Maybe. Maybe. No. No. Okay. Today I'm with Trevor. He's the one starting out this season with me. I, I'm gonna find a soundtrack of an applause and put it right there. <laughs> start hiving let's get yeah. back to these candles because you stalled hard on that okay so we were talking before this and i forgot how it started no, i wanted a I wanted a new lighter this is this is kind of intimate because you you lit a candle and everything right before you started yeah recording. i lit a candle before we started but anyway i was lighting the candle and i was like man if this gets farther down i'm gonna need a lighter for candles and uh, then like a basic barbecue lighter. Yeah. Yeah. And then he was like, you could just turn the candle upside down. I was like, you're right. That makes sense. I could do that. It's not a big candle. It's about, what would you say, two, maybe three inches tall? <laughs> Unzip, we'll find out. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but he was like, yo, you don't really need one unless it's one of those real big candles. And I, to make sure I understood him, I said, you mean like one of the Mexican Catholic candles? And then he's like, you need to click record so we can talk about it. Yeah, because I wanted whatever the hell was coming up after this to be on That was it. On tape. I was just waiting for a yes or no. Are you talking about the candles with like the... Like the Virgin Mary the and Virgin stuff Mary, on it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know what those candles are called. I'm an ignorant American. Okay. <laughs> so I just wanted to know what they were called. Oh, well, you don't think they're Mexican Catholics in America? Is that what you're getting at? No, I'm saying that... Oh, yeah, I forgot. You can hear everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I've only seen them at the uh, the Mexican Mart down on... Uh, I'm sorry, you saw it where? The Mexican Mart? That's what it's called. That's the name of the store. I'm it's not being actually racist. the name of the store? Yeah. Okay. It's that, the actual name of the store. That is amazing. <laughs> I understand how that sounded racist, but that's the name of the store. <laughs> okay. Was it was like Mexican Market, but on the front of the building just says Mexican Mart or Mexi Mart or something like that. But it sounded super sketch and something you're like, I can only repeat this if somebody knows the name of this store already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Yes, one of those candles. Okay. Or you know, the like forty dollar Yankee candles that are like ridiculously big that I don't know why I own. I love Yankee Candle for the record. I just wanted to put that out there. We can go back to We can go back where? Because you make it sound like we take trips to Yankee Candle together. No. I was, I was going to say you can go back to what you were talking about. I just wanted to say I love Yankee Candle. Place gives me a headache. Me and uh, Princess went to Yankee Candle. Got a bunch of candles like a couple months ago. Well, it's yeah, been about half a year ago now. We are I think we are all at the mall that day. No, you weren't. For Yankee Candle. Were you with us that day? I think so. I don't remember. Yankee Candle, Bed Bath and Body Works or whatever the name of that store is. Oh, I hate that store. Yeah, all those places give me a headache and they make my skin itch. I don't get that one. I have eczema too, by the way. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Literally, when they're like spraying that shit in the air and it gets on me and stuff, it like itches. So it's like, ah, oh, thanks, person. Okay. Yeah, I hate 
I hate Bed Bath & Beyond just because it's so big. And every time I go there, I go with the female. Bath & Body Works, that's the one money. in the mall. Bath & Body Works? Yeah, that's the one that makes me itch. The ones with all the... Oh, the I, open, I don't like open them Open up either. Our, our hall closet with her little stash of shampoos and hand sanitizers and all that. They're all Bath & Body I Works. I don't think I've ever opened that closet. Like, this year. All right, then I'm taking those top two shelves back. No, that's all I was about to say. Like, <laughs> I could use those two shelves, and I forgot that they existed. Yeah, there's a lot of, like, when we split up the shelves in the house, you don't use half of them, and I'm thinking about taking some back. No, I know the one closet, the game closet. Yeah. I didn't claim anything in there. Yeah, I all gave like, you the, you can... like, that top section, and, like, you didn't use it, so I started using it. Yeah, because we had talked about it, and I was like, I'm, I don't have anything I'll, I'm going to put there. You can go ahead and just Oh, we use put the it. Pokemon stuff up there. Yeah, because we were doing the Pokemon Channel stuff. I was like, we can just use that. I figured you'd just throw all the excess bulk up there. That's what I was doing. Well, that's what we were doing, and then you started throwing it up there, and I was just like, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, like your extra magic bulk. Oh, no, I, I have a couple of different bins for my magic bulk. Like, I have storage bins of magic bulk. Yeah. I'm planning on going through all of it eventually i'm missing like half of my bulk and i still have too much i'm missing a good portion of my bulk and i still have two storage bins <laughs> of bulk. i've been playing magic for a while guys for the record yeah it's 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 a thing now no. i'm not moving that if, there's a case of water on top of that no if you want one take one of the water oh i'm being nice Oh, I thought you were, like, pointing at the bin. I was like, I'm not moving that water thing. I'd blow out all the headphone users. Yeah. No, don't move. Don't move the whole thing. Just grab, like, a single one. And I'll just mute the sound it makes. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can, like, uh, sneak one out. From... Nope. Kind of. Okay. It wasn't that bad, so I'll <laughs> leave it. But, um... We were actually trying to think of a topic for this, but he was just like, start recording. Do it now. Oh, I was hoping this would get a lot more racist a lot faster. No, I was not going to be racist. I was just making a comment about something. Okay. I just wanted, just you in case. You just assumed I was going to be racist? Who's paid more jars? None of it was about race. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. The one who does the most for race is probably Crystal. Yeah. She's mad at me because apparently her not, we're not going to go into it on the podcast. <laughs> I'll talk to you more after. Okay. I can't do it on here without telling her before I do it. You can't just put her on blast yeah, like that? Yeah, I can't okay. just put her on blast. Okay. Um, sad news, I guess. We can't do like a, like a news that affects us. A uh, quote affects us. Yeah, it doesn't actually affect me, but it affects my YouTube uh, feed. Yeah. And well, I just think that one is person, a personal though. attack. Yeah. Like, it's people who don't pay for cable and watch a lot of YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Poke YouTube is a... Yeah, the Pokemon community in YouTube. Has been going through some issues, and uh, it's kind of sad. Oh, uh, that... You made that sound trivial. <laughs> okay, so we're not going to go through all of the people involved, because I don't... I don't know all the information, and to be honest, I don't really know most of the people involved, like as a content creator of any kind. Yeah, these are all just things we're seeing from content creators, so they're not like people we know, we can't say anything about their character, we just know their personas. Yes. And unfortunately, some of them have made some very, very big mistakes, and it's coming back. Yes, and the Me. only one only one I can comment on, uh, just from being a fan of theirs for a while, like, I was subscribed to him for, like, four, four years, something like that. When was the first UCL? Because it was right before the first UCL. How many UCLs has there been? There's been three, but they took like a year and something off one time. So four or five years or so. Yeah. I don't remember. But we're talking about uh, 
Nappy, the King Nappy, or Nappy the Great, or wherever you first saw him, uh, is in trouble on the YouTube uh, website, and they the accusations against him is that he was child grooming uh, children is the phrase that people have started using. I don't quantify them as children. They were like 15, 16. You are into your teenagers at that point. You are no longer a child. Okay. Grooming teens. Still doesn't Grooming sound... minors. Ch- there you go. Children and minors have way different connotations. Okay, we'll say minors. Yeah. My, minors is one thing. When you say children, that's... That's a huge difference. Okay. So, minors. Um, One of them was Hoodlum Callum. And the first person to call out Nappy was Luke, a.k.a. Game Boy Luke. Now, when it first happened, as a Nappy fan, I was like, this can't be real. This can't be real. This is just that group trying to overthrow. Yeah. Yeah, when we looked at it, the people who were going after him were all collaborating together. And doing stuff together, so it kind of looked a little suspicious. There was this huge thing about them not actually having proof. It's going to take them a while to get some, and, and all that. And it um, it kind of didn't didn't look right, but it was still just like a, we need to hold off and wait because you know stuff like this is a floodgate thing. Yeah. Once they open, stuff starts coming out, and sure enough, it did. Yeah, it did. I'm sad that it did, but what happened happened, and then I was like, well, I was a fan of his. I can't believe these are happening, because he then had a live stream about the other people that was accused before he was accused, and he was like, damning them for doing what they did, and it comes to find out he was doing something similar. Yeah. That whole... Like, like there's no proof that Nappy actually like physically touched these people. I will say that there's proof that these other people physically touched somebody. So like, I don't want to put them on the same pedestal because it's not. But I mean, it is, but it's not. Cyber, cyber crimes like this are often held in the same respect as a lot of the physical ones because it's still wrong. Yes. It, there's still a lot going on there. Yeah, I'm saying, like, they are both wrong. Like, condemn them both. Or all three or four of them. I forgot how many it is now. But, like, none of them deserve a platform of any kind afterwards. But, as a person, I feel as though doing it in real life to a person and doing it online... Whoops. You heard my spring? That's okay. (laughs) Uh, but doing it differently is just like both wrong but I don't know I don't know how to explain it really I understand what you're saying then not having physical contact does make it a different context however physically doing this what they've done and there's also a lot of the psychological stuff that's come up about Nappy yeah and what he was doing that in my opinion makes it equally as bad because psychological damage can oftentimes be a lot worse than physical damage yeah and oftentimes they do go hand in hand but it's a lot easier sometimes for people to get over physical like a physical incident than it is for them to get over the psychological ones yeah and so in my opinion it is equally as bad and you know a lot of it also was for the other people it was harassment yes on some of their parts but when it comes to the physical stuff it's all it was often consensual people yeah and with what's come out about nappy it was pretty much not consensual one way but feel like it was being forced uh that was only the case in what i know of callum and luke but to the same effect they That situation is murky to me, but I understand. Well, this, we were talking, uh, the second stuff that came out about Nappy, the other ac- accusers, what was their the, story? The other accusers had, like, 
apparently told them the age they were and afterwards Nappy's still like talking to them in an inappropriate manner knowing how old they are and where the other one was like just Callum and Luke like not the other ones the other ones I'm convinced are foolproof he did it but those two when they first came out was like oh they're just that other pokey group that are upset that Nappy okay, was like I can't be friends into, with you this does put it to a different context then because at that point it is creepy nonetheless but let's face it we've all been to middle school with those chicks who yeah. want to date the 20 year old guys and it's yes weird but at the same time consensual which not yes. not saying it's okay it's absolutely not it's okay. not okay it, it is absolutely not okay but it's not like what was the, what was the original accusations against him of forcing people to be with him force like using careers yeah against him and the same shit that would happen with uh a lot of the movie stars with that me too movement and stuff yeah of using their careers and their livelihood as leverage to get them into inappropriate things that at this point with the other accusations that's not happened and yeah because like the other ones <clears throat> were not the, the other, other content creators they were like just people fans of his yeah so like that and let let's face it with the fame you do kind of some fan stuff that's how he got all those SDs and stuff was just sleeping with fans and well, stuff. Well, he only really got the one, but it was a hell of a one. Okay, you're going to sit here and tell me Easy probably never had crabs? I'm just saying that we only know of the one for sure. Fair enough. He could have had a bunch. I'm saying we could have had a bunch. I would but, bet money Easy has had crabs. Yeah, I would bet money that he has had something too, but. The AIDS one is the only one we know for sure. Yeah. It's on the death certificate. Yeah. Uh, back, anyway. to, back to the point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other the other people that are in hot water, too, are the ones that were also harassing people, though. It wasn't like fans coming to them. It was them harassing people and basically almost forcibly wanting the stuff from them. Yeah. That's, that's, in my opinion, what puts it into a totally different light. Yeah, I mean... I, like I said, I was a fan of his, so I'm always going to have, like... We're always not going to see it. We're, we're going to have a bit of a bias to it, let's yeah, just face it. We're going to, that's what I'm saying. We're going to, we're not going to condone what they, what he's done, but we're also not going to completely demonize every aspect of it. Now, with that said, like, I'm, I'm no longer a fan of Nappy. I'm, I'm not either. Like, I do like his content that he made beforehand before we knew any of this so like and the, the same thing can be so like the blaze black stuff the soul links and all that oh, like we run into the same issues as we run in with a lot of people yes that we like it's trying to separate the person from their work no like i've always been able to separate the person from the work but i don't know if i can do that for nappy himself I don't know if I can do that because a lot of his work is based on his personality. We don't really know that because, again, as a content creator, he his online personality could have just I been know, that. I know his online personality could have been different than what he actually is. But now it's hard to separate that what happened from his online personality, in yeah. my opinion. Because we run into the same issue with Spacey, Cosby, Michael Jackson... Like a lot of people, now, like, it's hard to separate. A lot of those I have separated from each other. Like what Kevin Spacey did is not going to stop me from watching House of Cards. Well, Seven. if I watched House of Cards, he's not going <laughs> to stop me from watching. Seasons. Yeah, he's not going to stop me Seven, from watching we'll Seven. Seven. Seven is still an amazing movie, even though he's in it. Now, will I look at that movie differently a little bit? Yeah. I mean, do you really have to? He's not on any of the shit till the very end. Remember, they purposely left him out? Yeah. Ev like, including advertisements, opening credits, everything to not spoil who the bad guy was in the end, which I thought was a genius, but... Yeah, it was. But, like... Like, yes, or I even, separate um, Kevin Spacey Was it Harvey Weinstein? Before. That's not going to stop me from watching the movies by his production company. Well, to be fair, it's not like you actually get to see him or anything like that with it, so... 
in my opinion, that's different if you're behind the I mean, scenes. You're going to see his trouble. name at the beginning of all of them. Though. Well, so. Okay. I get what you're saying. Um, it. I definitely separated Masterson. Michael Jackson from what he did. Oh, yeah. I fucking love Man yeah. in the Mirror. Yeah, you're not fucking with Thriller. Like, yeah. I don't I don't care. Um, We'll say Masterson, how he separated himself from his work. I still love that 70s show. Yeah. I still love The Ranch. I never really watched much of The Ranch, but what I have seen that show is hilarious. It really was. I mean, Sam Elliott as a compliment to yeah. Ashton Kutcher and Masterson was a fantastic idea. Um, but yeah, separating their, what they've done with their work is, I guess, a little easier because it, when you see an actor, you see them as their character, not as their person when it comes to youtube content creators and this has been an issue with a lot of content creators of people seeing them not as their persona and personality but as that's them yeah and even myself like i'm not a big creator don't get me wrong but what i portray online is not who i am in person yeah like who i am on these podcasts are normally who i am as a person more candid stuff like this podcast yeah. yeah you do get to see people's true personalities uh kind of shine through a little bit because on my channel i go by vincent i don't even go by my first name on the podcast i go by my first name because this is more like me and my friends having a random conversation yeah and like i said more candid stuff like this podcast people sitting down and just talking are more you get to see them as opposed to PewDiePie. Yeah. Pe- PewDiePie was a character. He gave it a name. Yeah. I can see that. But there's also some creators who put, like, who actually do put their, like, personalities on the line. They they do to an extent, but there is also the, a little bit of acting and hamming it up. Yeah. I mean, there's always going to be some of that. Yeah. And you just, you just got to sit down and try to figure out how much of it is which we never really could know yeah because even me as a person i don't know where that line is in my own stuff yeah (laughs) because i don't mean to put on a personality it just happens yeah and that's i think that's part of it is like doing this stuff kind of gives you a people see it as like performance a chance to be something a little bit outside of themselves even if it's not by much yeah so yeah, I could see where it'd be harder with a YouTube creator trying to separate their work from them because their work seems like them. Yeah. It, it's not like they're specifically putting on, like, or being somebody different. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you saw it, but... um, Musicians, I'll say, would be another hard one because... Oh, musicians for me is not hard. Because they are storytelling, but a lot of the stories aren't about themselves. A lot of them aren't. Some of them are, but a lot of yeah. them aren't. Like, most trash rap rappers, they don't live that life, really. Like, look at Takashi 6 9 He doesn't live that life. You know who did live that life? Who? Snoop Dogg. Yeah. On trial for murder. Yeah, he lived that life. Yeah. But, like, a lot of them, a lot and of even- the newer rappers don't. Like, Even some of the old ones, like, uh, I don't know if you knew this, Tupac didn't consider himself a gangster. Yeah. He considered himself an artist, above all else. Yeah. Like, the whole thug life and all that stuff was his art. He actually said that he wasn't he wasn't the door-kicking in gangbanger everybody assumes him to be. Yeah. He's kind of like Dave Chappelle when Dave Chappelle was like, they thought I was from the streets and I wasn't, but I wasn't going to correct them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, less than that, but it's not exactly like... Like, we see other artists like T.I. and, you know, 50 Cent guys who came up selling drugs and then continued to got in trouble for selling drugs. Yeah. Like, T.I. went to jail for gun running and shit and having a bunch of guns on him. Yeah, he had a whole show about getting your life together and then missed the series reunion because he was in jail. Yeah. For drugs. For drugs and gun possession. Yeah, yeah. Those those people are the ones that... They, they live that life, and so if they get in trouble for something, you kind of can't separate them because that honestly is them. Yeah. But will you stop watching Nappy's content? Pro- yeah. Let's face it. 
I, me personally, I mainly watch Nappy for his collabs. Um, I'm not saying I didn't like Nappy, but his personality was a little too boisterous, for my opinion. Yes. I mean, we I shared an apartment, that. and I knew every time you watched a Nappy episode, because I could hear the intro from three rooms away. Nothing in this house is three rooms away. You get my point. I could be in the kitchen. <laughs> I could be in the kitchen doing dishes, and in your room, I could hear, "What's well, good?" Yeah, <laughs> and I'd be like, "He's watching the new Soul League," <laughs> or like, "He's watching Nappy's yeah. next episode of his playthrough." Like, I could tell, and he was just a little too boisterous for me. Not by much, but yeah, enough to be a little off-putting. Yeah, for me, I'm gonna stop watching his solo stuff for sure. But, like, the Soul Link, I'm not going to stop watching. Yeah, Because I love the Soul Link. To Even be though fair, I don't... no one's going to collab with him again. Yeah. No one's collabing with him again. So, like, this is going to be it for him. And I, I truly do miss the... The part that I miss about Nappy the most is Nappy and Shady. Which, I yeah. can't be mad at Shady for canceling the Soul Link. He did that perfectly to protect his brand. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, that's that's what I'm going to miss the most is Soul Links, honestly. Because yeah. Shady came out, he gave very little information about, like, how he personally felt. I mean, he gave a little bit, but it was mostly about his brand. Like, he wanted to protect his brand and keep his family image on his channel. And stopping the Soul Link while stuff was still coming out was the best way to go. Because if he would have kept making videos when it was just Luke and Callum and then they made like three more episodes and then the other people came out, it would have looked real bad. Hell, even if he just released what was already recorded, yeah, just another episode, it would have been bad, in my opinion. I think flat out talking to Nappy and deciding, hey, look, man, I need I need to stop, like, my brand this is my livelihood i think that was good i respect the just the flat out we need to stop until this gets sorted yeah and then what was even better shady scramble for new content because he was i think he was only doing the soul link at the time yeah and he was planning on doing the rival lock too like doing the rival lock on the days where he wasn't doing the soul link and when the Soul Link ended, he started the Shady Lock immediately. He started the Rival Lock immediately. The Shady Lock. No, the Sorry, Rival the Lock came out, like, day of accusation. Like, it was coming out anyway. Yeah. I think it's for the best. I think it was, one, convenient he had that Rival Lock already set up. Yeah. And two, I think it's even more convenient that his Rival Lock was set up with somebody also has nothing to do with any of this. Yes. Another content creator who is completely... There's a few of them that are not involved in anything that are separated themselves to be not involved in anything. Yeah. They're not on choosing sides or with the guys that yeah, the like, accusators or stuff like that. He didn't continue to soul link, soul link with Nappy and he didn't start anything with like Game Boy Luke or Callum or Mohit or any of that. Yeah. I forgot about Mohit's involvement. Yeah. Mo- Mohit clearly chose a side. Yeah. Mohit clearly chose a side. But to be fair, it was morally the right side to choose. Ambig- I'll say ambiguous for now, but he... No. I won't say he morally was on the right side. I'll say he morally wasn't on the wrong side. Okay, so it's not he was right. He just ended up right. I won't say he... I'll say he, he wasn't right, but he wasn't wrong. Got it. He did choose what ended up being the right side. What ended up being not the wrong side. I Until it. more proof comes out with Luke and Callum, I'm not considering that the right side. Okay, so we're just considering the other people that came out against yes. Snappy. Yes. Okay, I can see that. Like I said, I don't know much about Luke and Callum since, like, I think it was the day... Uh, who was it? Luke? Luke, I think, said something first. The day Luke said something or the day after or so when Callum said something... I don't know if there's any more information past the first, like, three days. I think I don't think there is either. I think they're now going to ride the coattails of the current accusations. Because remember, they were like, it's going to take me a, a while to get yeah. my stuff together. And now that there's other people coming out, 
yes, it kind of gives more credibility to theirs, but at the same time, it could just be like a a thing. Yeah. I know Nappy has already It, it said honestly could have just been since they were so... Because they were one of the few people who even knew Nappy was bisexual. It could have yeah. just been that they knew of it happening and decided to... Yeah. To be the first. Like, this is our chance. Yeah. I don't want to say that about them right I now. I don't either. I'm saying it is a possibility, in my opinion. Yeah, I can see that. But I also think that... um, uh, What was I going to say? The storyline of, like, Luke being... Was it ostracized is the word I'm looking for? From the group? Um, shortly after him and Nappy's timeline of when oh, they yeah, stopped. Yeah, yeah. It lines up really well. And the Callum one lines up pretty well. And... Like, w- timeline-wise, their stories line up. I don't know if that's by coincidence or it was planned that way or if that's I- actually what happened. Either of those possibilities is true. And the other thing is, like, another thing you have to look at is if their stories are the same every time they tell it, that's actually a sign of lying. I don't know if you knew that, but in interrogations and in interviews and stuff like that, if your story is the exact same every time you tell it, that's a sign of rehearsal and a sign of it being fabricated. Because when people tell the truth, minor things, minor things can get left like, out. He was wearing, like, a blue shirt. Like, no, I think it was, like, like a dark green. And having minor details like that can, one, be a sign of telling the truth, one, be a sign of fabrication, trying to add in, I'll say, adding in unnecessary details. Because that was, like, that podcast, Serial, I don't know if you listened to it, where they, this guy was arrested for killing his girlfriend, and now they're, like, did he actually do it? So they're asking him, like, hey, where were you that day at this time? He's like, I don't know, because it was just a normal day. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you come to somebody, like, where were you at this time on that day? He's like, I was at the grocery store. I know that for a fact. Like, do you? Yeah. Like, he was like, I left school and I went to the library, but I don't know how long I was there or what time, like, I left. I just remember going. Another thing you can do, uh, this is a neat little trick, is you can ask them to give their events backwards. Hmm. Because everyone on fabricated stories, everyone always rehearses it front to back. Yeah. Because that's the way they would tell it. Uh, If you ask someone to recount their steps backwards, no one ever rehearses it backwards, so they don't, they can't usually tell you. But if it's a normal day for you and it's what happened, you can normally recount what you've done that day backwards. Oh, I I couldn't tell you what I've did today backwards. We'll no, say, I could. Yeah, like, like you just gotta think and then put like it backwards. I watched some Try Guy videos. You're, no, you're I was forward. doing the Overwatch videos. I, I was watching Overwatch before we did this podcast. Yes. Before that, I was watching Try Guy stuff before you came in. Uh, I got I took shit. I went from Walmart home to take that shit. Uh, while we were at Walmart, before that, me and Princess went to Starbucks. And before that, I ordered food from Bite Squad. And that's as far as I remember. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, that's when I started my, my day with you, so that's all I can verify. <laughs> 2 p.m., people. 2 p.m. is when I wake up. <laughs> I work third shift. I, see, you can I was watching Try Guys backwards. before that, too. Yeah, you were watching Try Guys there when I came in. Yeah. See, you can recount your day backwards because it's, it happened. Okay. If you try to bullshit some story and they're like, tell it backwards, you will stumble hard. Because you don't fabricate a story backwards. You fabricate it forwards and only memorize it So forwards. if I want to lie, practice going backwards. That is a secret, yes. Practice your story front and back. Seems legit. I'm practice never going to remember to do that. Practice it starting from the middle. Oh. And now you know how to lie in interrogation. It's all about practice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm not fucking with you. Yeah. Dude, I hope no this one... Is, this is a science. This is used... I hope this isn't what people take away from this. Don't lie. Do not lie. Lying is bad. 
Unless your girlfriend asks how she looks in a certain dress. Oh, yeah. Lie then. Lie, lie your ass off and stick to your guns. I don't lie to my girlfriend when she asks me because she asked me to tell her. Ask dumb questions, get dumb answers. She she told me to make sure I look good in whatever because I don't want to look out the I don't want to walk out the house looking some sort of way. And I was like, are, do you, are you sure? <laughs> and we've been together for two years since then, so you know. She got what she wanted. I don't know if she got what she wanted, but that's what she Pod- asked for. Podcast listeners <laughs> could not see the face I made toward him of I can call your bullshit and you know it. And she got what she asked for. I I can guarantee that. Yeah. You can get what you asked for. And then sometimes you get what you asked for. <laughs> There's a reason that's a phrase. Yeah, what was it? Uh if you try sometimes, you get what you need. Was that? That was the end of that part, wasn't it? Oh, the song? Yeah. Oh, you don't you always get what you want, you but if you try sometimes, find, you'll get what you need. Yeah. Yeah, that. That's what happened. Okay. <laughs> you asked for it? I, I was like, is it, I was. I thought we were going to an actual phrase, not lyrics by... Who made that song? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, I'm pretty sure that can, song is older than me. I can hear it playing right now in my head, but I have no idea who sings it. I can hear that song playing with like four different TV shows. <laughs> like I've heard that song so many times. I four shows, remember. three, six seasons in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm still waiting for that movie. <laughs> uh, for those of you that don't know, this is a reference to Community. And the famous phrase, six seasons in a movie. Yeah. I can't wait. To be fair, I wish, like, in that in that skit, they bring up The Cape. The Cape was a badass TV show. Did you ever watch it? Looked it looked really good. The, the concept of, and this is, in my opinion, genius on the part of the, uh, on the part of the writing... The bad guy does yeah. this genius thing where he wants to kill the good guy, but he's not the cape yet. Yeah. So he basically takes this cop, frames him, saying he's the mass bad guy this whole time, and sends him out to die. Yeah. This, A, gives your good guy a backstory. B, sets your bad guy up to do whatever he needs to in the shadows. And C... Let's your bad guy kind of get away from the his identity and lets him be in the shadows because it's like, oh, hey, look, he's actually the bad guy. Yeah. It's like the Joker painting somebody up in his makeup, sending him out to get captured and killed. And it's like, cool. Yeah. I am free now to do whatever the hell I want. And as long as I don't say I'm the Joker, no one will think I'm the Joker. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it framed the good guy, gave the good guy an excuse to be dead and do his shit from the secret and keep his secret identity. And it let the bad guy be the bad guy in secret and keep his secret identity. And it was a great little start to the show. Yeah. Man, we really kept up with the rambling part of this, didn't we? Yeah. I'm so glad. Because, <laughs> like I said, we started this with no idea what we were talking about. We also kind of started on a very weird topic. What, the candles? Very- Serious. No, no, shortly after. Yeah, we did yeah, start with candles. With candles. Yeah. We did start with candles, <laughs> didn't we? No, I'm telling you where we went from candles. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the cape. I love the cape. I was sad when it got... Oh, it, it was one of those TV shows that I found on a streaming service, watched a couple seasons, and went, oh, I'm going to look this up to see when the next season releases. And then I found out the whole thing is canceled, and I am just angry. <laughs> It's like never. It's like not knowing what Firefly is, watching the first season, and going, "Oh, this is great. When is season two happening?" And then like, IMDb just breaks your heart. Uh, it's gotta suck. I didn't it watch did. Firefly, so I don't care. Uh, it happened with Firefly, of course. It happened. Uh, it happened with the Cape. It happened. The one that hurt me was Freaks and Geeks. Yeah, it had in in my opinion, it happened with Lethal Weapon. The TV show remake. 
Oh, uh, yeah. Because they... Oh, they canceled it? No, they killed off the main guy. Oh. The, uh... This is... People look into this yourself. There was actually a lot of drama going on in the background. Um, Damien Waynes is notoriously a bitch to work with, right? Yes. Well, supposedly, there was a lot of heat between him and the other actor. The one who was playing Mel Gibson's part. Yeah. The, the other, like... There are two guys in Lethal Weapons, and it's them. They are Lethal Weapon, right? Yeah. Yeah, the Mel Gip, the guy who was playing the Mel... Uh, what the fuck? I forgot. Gibson. Mel Gibson character. He got killed off at the end of the second season. Oh. They just flat killed off his character. They didn't tell him either. Oh, so he didn't even know. He just didn't get called back for season three. Wow, that's a shit way to find out. And they replaced him with Sean William Scott. I don't even know who that is. Stifler. Whoa, really? Yeah. Oh, man, what a beating. Yeah. And there's there's a lot going on behind the scenes about that. About how one of the uh, the big execs always had his back when it come to the show. Yeah. But all the writers, all the producers... uh. Damien Wayne all kind of had it out to get him off the show because he was standing up and trying to make the show good instead of just trying to shell out shit. Yeah. Because supposedly the writers were like trying to get him to do various things and he kept going, no, the character absolutely would not do this. Yeah. You're trying to rewrite and remake the character into something that he's not. And he wasn't really going for it. And they, uh, Hand him. Yeah, I can believe that. Mm hmm. That sucks, but I can believe it. Yeah. Alright, so let's cut it here. Yeah, sounds was, good. I was thinking 30 to 45 minutes with just two people. Yeah, and we're at 42 now, so. Yeah, so once I remember an outro, because I forgot the outro altogether, I don't yeah. remember it. Oh. oh! Okay, go ahead. You can do it. Uh, one last bit of news that we'll talk about in the next one. I bought a 3D printer. It should be arriving in a couple days. Oh, yeah. Check back in with you guys after I get that set up. Yeah, we're definitely going to print some random stuff. And I'll add some pictures to this so we can see it. Okay. I'll be done for that. All right, so this is all me. This is the part that I wrote. And I didn't want to start with it right now, but we're going to ease into it. And what we're easing into is... I was taking a drink while I was going to ask if you wanted a drum roll. Yeah, you drum rolling is a lot better because when I did it and I stopped, the springs kept sounding. <laughs> but anyway, I am going to start, since it's just going to be me and one other person, I'm going to start recording these. So there's going to be a video of the podcast on YouTube slash Vimeo. Yeah. And the audio version of the podcast will be on SoundCloud. I don't have the information for the Vimeo one yet, but the YouTube one is going to be the same YouTube channel that the rest of them are on. If you don't know it, it'll be in the description box. Actually, no, it's going to be on that channel. So it's not going to be in the description box because you're already here. Just click the profile. <laughs> but the Vimeo will be at the bottom and the SoundCloud will be at the bottom. And just follow slash subscribe to both of them. And I hope you enjoy what we have planned going forward. And we will see you guys next. You'll see us next time. Ramble with you guys later. Oh, yeah. We'll ramble at midnight next time.